I have a question. How do you feel about esports? I have a very strong opinion on esports. Hello, 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 hello. Window. They are enjoyable to watch. Esports, Resident Sleeper, esports. I like esports, but I don't watch it. Eh. Hate esports. I watch one and two a lot. StarCraft one and two. Used to enjoy it, not so much. They can be fun to watch. I love that, but rarely. Okay, we have a pretty mixed opinion, but mostly not really. Kind of mid to watch. Esports run balancing for normal players. Yo, there. That's it. That's what happens. Yep. That's that's why I have a strong opinion on esports. It ruins the game for casuals, and some games should not be esports. I don't really like esports, but I don't like watching regular sports. Fair enough. Cough, cough, DBD. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Tanji is working for me. Only esports I kind of follow is Rocket League. Is that? I thought that was like a casualish game, though. I don't know. Maybe balancing is kind of different in that regard. So I don't know. Boom, boom. Well, it's mostly physics based and you can't balance physics. True, true. A lot of esports players cheat. No, I wouldn't say that. It's really easy to catch someone cheating, let's be honest. Having played StarCraft for over 20 years, I kind of have an attachment to it. And I know it's not for everyone. Yeah, no, absolutely. Esports is ruined gaming. No short and sweet video. An arena full of excited fans waiting to watch their favorite Kumara fan! Oh, very cute. Game. Like this. But this hyper competitive, high octane electronic sport these guys are playing isn't doing too hot right now. It's been dominated by one incredibly powerful strategy, and the game. Oh, look at that Coca Cola sponsor. Damn, I wonder how much money they get. It into long and boring matches with no variation. The commentators, passionate and desperate to keep the game alive, are trying to find any breadcrumb of excitement. That's isn't that an Overwatch reference? That they can, but they know that it's a futile effort. As the tournament goes on, people start to leave the arena. Sponsors lose faith in the game, and eventually, <gasps> the developer's baby and worker's passion has been forced to shut down. Uh -oh. This scenario is a game developer's absolute worst nightmare. Yo, is this a VTuber? Hell yeah, I like this. Hold on, maybe you can't see him. Oh yeah, you can't see him. Okay, I just got worried. Or I was blocking him with my fucking big fat head. Every new multiplayer game release eventually turns into a high. <laughs> He's a snowman. Piece. I feel like that expectation has the hot life the cycle. Yes. Not just a wide part of the gaming community. But is the video quiet? Or just me? Is it, is the video too quiet, guys? Turn it up a little bit. Even the developers of these games themselves, and I can't help but feel like both sides are just missing the point. Just because a game comes out with a multiplayer mode in it doesn't mean it has what it takes to be a competitive game. Otherwise, we'd be seeing million dollar Mario Kart tournaments crop up everywhere. <laughs> so what sets Mario Kart apart from say, League of Legends or Street Fighter? And what makes a good eSport? Well, to answer that question, I'll go through the reasons people seem to think are true, but really aren't. Balancing. Balancing is such a fucking big factor. Like HOTS, for example, like you said, the HOTS life cycle, they tried to force that shit so hard when they could have just made a really great game for casual MOBA players. Like me personally, I loved launching up uh, uh, Heroes of the Storm and playing for like 20 minutes a day. It was just fun. And they could have had something, but they just ruined it. There's a common notion that rampant dev support is needed for a game to be successful in a tournament setting. That without millions of dollars from the developers and coca-cola mm -hmm. sponsorships at every event then your game is just going to die in reality though all the developer support can really do is artificially make the game seem like it's alive when it very likely would be abandoned if there wasn't any monetary incentive to play competitively 
Games like Fortnite had to learn this the hard way, because although the Fortnite World Cup had the biggest prize pool in esports history- Oh shit, a hundred million dollars? Massive arena full of rabid children, it still couldn't escape the fact that the game itself doesn't make for a good viewing experience, because all you see is a battle of who gets the luckiest with their weapon drops, and which- RNG in a video game? Yeah. Which player can build a tower the fastest, instead of actually shooting the other guy. All you have to do to disprove this is look at the numerous examples where games have had large and passionate communities with little to no dev support, such as the Smash community and pretty much the entire early FGC. Oh These my games God. were, or still are, alive and kicking <laughs> with only the passion of a few players and grass. We don't talk about the Smash pros though. Some of them are uh, Smash but especially unsavory. shows this fully, considering Nintendo has tried to kill its competitive scene in every way imaginable since its inception. Some yep. people are going to say that fighting game tournaments have had full developer support and big sponsorships for about a decade now. So I can't use them as an example because they're using the same things to grow themselves that I say don't grow esports. And although that is true, the devs wouldn't have done much to grow the FGC in the first place if it no, hadn't had not. that backbone of passionate grassroots support from the 90s and 2000s. Yeah. Dev support simply can't prop up a bad esport. And similarly, adding metric shit tons of content to a game through patches isn't going to do that either yeah apex is better for viewing but i still think that apex is very confusing compared to say something like csgo csgo is like oh my god he went around a corner and shot him in the head oh my gosh it's so easy to understand oh no boom he knifed him oh boom he shot him in the head he's dead oh we won with like games that are too complicated for like the average person to understand those are the ones that fail the most as soon as you start getting too complicated, that's Frequent when you lose viewership. Frequent passes, skins, new maps, weapons, and characters are a common thing to see in modern games, and they admittedly can be a great way. Battle to Royale esports is dumb. Yeah, there's there's, there's RNG the involved too. That's why it sucks but as well. They are only at their most effective if there aren't any other glaring issues outside of the game's content. It doesn't matter how many skins and characters multiverses adds. It's not going to fix the server connectivity issues and the lack of modes other than online versus. And you can see the result of that in its dramatic drop in players since release. Oh my if god. You want a game, for an example, <laughs> take CSGO, a game that has had periods of years go by with little to no significant yep. additions Boom, to Boom, he's dead. Easy. Valorant came out. And it is still one of the biggest and most beloved esports of all time. Having too little content makes a game feel shallow and unfinished, sure, but adding too much content. Hence why Rocket League Esports is superior, he hit the ball, no, he defended, scores yeah, ole ole. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cause it's like it's easy to understand. There's just fucking cars, there's a two goals, and a bunch of fucking uh, just a ball. That's it. Not hard to understand. Can make a game feel bloated or even negatively impact the game experience if the new map or weapon favors a degenerate strategy. Smash 4 was a perfectly fine game that received constant updates and good new stages and characters, and these characters added a lot to the game. However, the final DLC character, Bayonetta, ended up ruining the game so badly that Nintendo shipped out an emergency last minute patch to fix her, which <laughs> didn't end up doing much, so I after they abandoned that. the game, it turned into such a toxic experience that two 15 year olds decided to have a standoff in EVO Grand Finals. Bro, what is going on? What is this? I don't know, I was stalling for time. What the I, fuck? I know what you're thinking. Ardrid, if there's something degen in a game, they should just nerf it. And I fully agree, but let's focus on that point a little more. Because all of these big company sponsorships and content altering patches pale in comparison to the most important thing that everyone says a good esport must have. The elusive and ever desired concept of balance. It's the idea that as many options in the game should be viable at the highest levels of play, and through that, the metagame will be healthy and intriguing for the players, and a fascinating experience to watch for the viewers at home. Yep. Balancing a game is always tough, and there's a ton of different philosophies you can use to accomplish it, but the one that has propped up over the last <coughs> few years is the idea of perfect balance, that everything should be as equal as possible for a game to be you can't do that man it sucks the, it sucks the fun out of the game and on top of that it's not something that you can balance if the game is complicated enough for the average person not be able to follow like even starcraft i think that's a little bit too difficult for the average person any fun competitively but again yeah. if you look at the history like you'll see way too many examples of beloved games that have had varying levels of balance smash Bros. melee second tag tournament one Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, all of these games are considered to be some of the greatest competitive games in their genre. 
yet have completely unbalanced rosters where only a small fraction of the characters available to you are viable in tournament play. Okay, at this point, some of you might be thinking something like, this guy is such a dumbass. He's making it seem like none of He's these things matter. Though. Anecdotal examples of games that came out 20 years ago that didn't have any of those things. As these that's games not didn't true. have the same standards or lofty expectations that we have now. Mm -mm. Or do they have the same level of options that we do now? Players at the time probably just stuck with their game despite being unbalanced or bloated. God, I fucking love Tech and Tag. I was so bad at it, but I loved it very much. My brother introduced me to it. It was fun. Whatever, right? Wrong. Wait. No! no! Allow me to disprove that statement with another anecdotal example. The player base transition from Tekken Tag Tournament 1 to Tekken 4, or the attempted transition. I this was my baby. Loved it. Say. Let's set Tekken the scene. 4. Tekken Tag 1 was considered to be the absolute gold standard of the Tekken series. The pro players loved it, and in just a little over a year, they would be able to play the game's eagerly anticipated sequel, Tekken 4. They waited until the game's release month in the arcades of July 2001, and when they got their hands on it, they hated it. Yeah. It was slow and weird, and the stages had warped. Like, I, I love it as a game, but again, it's probably really bad for competitive people. I totally understand where they're coming from. Some stuff now. Although, in hindsight, they were really cool. And to make that yeah. worse, yeah, exactly. an equally as unbalanced roster as Tag 1 with new character Steve and I especially love returning fighter Jin being incredibly oppressive. Tag yep. 4 matches quickly devolved into Jin versus Jin. Jin versus Jin! And the <laughs> It was just Jin versus Jin because I didn't want to play anything else. Because Jin Kazan was, was so OP. As it could have possibly been. So Based lame, on man. this guy's assumption earlier, you'd think that these players would stick with Tekken 4 as this was 2001 no. and there weren't as many options or as high expectations. No, they played Tekken Tag. Games. It's the more popular well, one. Well, actually, the exact opposite no. happened. After a while of trying to make Tekken 4 work, many Tekken old players Warren, simply man. either went back to the horribly unbalanced Tekken Tag 1 or transitioned to other fighting games. Many decided to switch to Namco's other 3D fighter series that had just released a new entry, Soul Calibur 2. No, the game where the entire roster Soul seemed Calibur. to be and cheap. So why did they go back? Aren't Tekken Tag 1 and Soul Calibur 2 just as bad as Tekken 4 when it comes to cheap characters and strategies? What was the difference between these games that made people hate Tekken 4 so much yet adore Tag 1 and Soul Calibur 2? People who were casuals did not hate Tekken 4. It was just the competitive people. And that's part Fine, go play your Tekken Tag! Well, to answer that question, I think it's finally time to get into the actual things that I think Alright, what is it? Tell me, Mr. Snowman. Sport. One, the game needs to be easy to understand and watch. Yep. It doesn't necessarily have to be fast-paced, but what it does have to be is something that even someone who has never even seen the game before can look at and understand. See as go. The game's Shoot man in head, he dead, we win. And, damage, and even strategies need to be as easy to understand as possible. As an easy to understand game, it's going to have a much simpler time bringing in new players than a visual clusterfuck like Fortnite to proceed. Overwatch Fortnite has is consistently so run into insane. this problem with its esports circuit too, where there are just so many particle effects and stuff. I find this also really fucking annoying when people who play Overwatch say, oh my god, I can't play Valorant and CSGO, it's too slow. It's like, it's because there's so much shit going on in your screen, man. There's so much going on. Your ADHD is going off, you're like, yeah, dopamine, 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 and that when you play something like CSGO and Valorant, it feels too slow for them. <laughs> so funny to me. On screen with no downtime whatsoever, that it's overwhelming for people who don't understand the game. Yeah, Overwatch is definitely an ADHD Two, game. A competent, for sure. Passionate community and tournament organizers. I'm not talking about Video some random bit rate, yeah. standard event organizer. I'm talking about someone from the much community crap going of their game that's passionate and hardworking. Usually someone who was a diehard player themselves who transitioned into TOA. Esports, for the most part, is not a very profitable industry. So to put on the greatest events on a frequent basis, you need people who are willing to lose money on running tournaments simply for the love of the game. It's what built the early days of Counter-Strike, the FGC, and pretty much every esport that stood the test of time today. Yeah, you never make money off of it, man. Scene can't at some point sustain itself on passion alone, then it has little hope of succeeding in a wider context. And three, this one is the most important one. The uh -oh. game's mechanics need to be as perfectly balanced as possible. 
Some of you are going to say that I'm contradicting myself here, as I literally just said that Bant wasn't important. I'm going to cook, let the snowman cook. All of the examples I showed of unbalanced games gaining esports success were unbalanced in their rosters, their weapons, their specific elements in which you interact with the game mechanics. The reason that people preferred Tekken Tag 1 to Tekken 4, despite both games having horribly unbalanced rosters, was because Tekken Tag 1's core game mechanics were simply much more balanced than Tekken 4's. Mm -hmm. Even if Steve and Jin were nerfed into oblivion in Tekken 4, the game would have died anyway because of its broken wall system and stupid- I f I'll admit that the bro the fucking wall system in Tekken 4 was terrible. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. I was like, oh yeah. It wouldn't matter if it's Bayonetta true. was never added into Smash 4, because the game's over-reliance on shielding as an approach option and the strength of grabs would have eventually killed it anyway. And no matter how many balance yeah, patches wall and track was they added to Overwatch as fuck. 1, it didn't stop the massive amount of stuns and the two tank meta from scaring people away. And after the Dude, I have a friend who plays basically only Overwatch, and I talk to them occasionally, and they were talking about how the stun meta playing a tank, they're a tank main, they said they quit because it was so fucking bad. Like, all you do is run in as a tank, and you just fucking die. You just, you just, like, get stunned, over, pushed back, knocked back, stunned again, walled, and you're just Those like, ah! Just in Overwatch 2, you can easily see losing your fucking how mind and how unfun that is. Community has gotten over that I game. Do Unless it's an extreme case, when a character or weapon is overpowered, there are always going to be players who will avoid them by using different characters or weapons. Low-tier heroes are a thing in every game, but when the core gameplay mechanics heavily favor a particular strat or playstyle, what are they going to do? And I do mechanics. not have the I do not have the reflexes to play Tekken anymore. Just watching that move, and I was like, "Ugh." <laughs> have you seen the SQC clip of him being stunned six times to death? Yes, yes, I have. As I first heard about SQC, he was raging at the game. Avoiding the game's mechanics is basically the same thing as not playing the game at all. So from that perspective, it's obvious just how important a balanced core gameplay loop is. In that sense, the metrics for what make a good eSport are very similar to what makes a good game in general. Nobody wants to play a platform where we're running and jumping are slow, after all. But mm. the problem is, in the pursuit of this eSports dream and eternal relevancy, a lot of developers seem to lose sight of that fact. Think yep. about the biggest live service games in the world right now. League of Legends, Valorant, League Apex of Legends. Legends. All of these games seem to be in good states now, but where will they be in they 20 will years? In Apex. Will they even be around in 20 years? If their level of success eh, stays the same, then probably, years, I guarantee damn. you the obsession these games' devs have with constant content updates and frequent balance patches will mean that the Apex of today will look nothing like the Apex of 2042. And what if these- I mean, you can even look at League from 10 years ago. The game is so bloated in comparison. Actually made the game worse rather than better. What will you do then? Play an older version of the game? This isn't Minecraft version swapping. These games require you to be online in order to play them. So it's ride or die with the current version until the yeah, devs fix it. Like, wow. And if the game servers get shut down, then tough luck. You are never playing this game again. Damn. When talking about game preservation, everyone mentions the old classics that require aging hardware to run. But what about the hundreds of live service games that require massive servers to run and have had so many content patches that the version of the game you played as a kid may not even be available anymore? I don't think that esports itself has really I miss been. Wildstar, from dude. It, Wildstar was different, myself, man. But the mentality and they really fucked that game of up. Esports that it puts the community and devs into definitely has. It isn't because ranked has caused tryhards to pop up everywhere and I can't 360 no-scope noobs anymore like back in the good old <laughs> Modern Warfare 2 days, but because game devs all over the world look at the prestige and deep competitive history of games like League of Legends. I feel as though esports ruined games. Heroes of the Storm and Overwatch were better when the game wasn't balanced around pro players. Yep. Wait, that fuck was kind of like... That last part was a little bit fucked up, but yeah, I totally agree, man. It's sad. I mean, <sighs> Overwatch was so fun when it was just like five heroes just smashing their faces into the wall. Five Torbjorns, like, yeah, it was annoying to fight, but it was still fun. <sighs> All 
Torbjins and Street Storm. Fighter. Five Torbs, yeah, it was so, so hard, fucking lame. They failed to see the mountain that they had to climb to reach that peak. And the true reasons why people play those games is that they are amazing, mechanically well balanced experiences that allow for deep mm, and engrossing gameplay. It's not letters. million dollar prize mm. balls and frequent content updates. And the furious chase of this ideal is simply not smart for most games that aren't really made for esports. A competitive scene has to be gradually built by diehard fans out of true passion for the game. And just like how you can lead a horse to water and you can't make it drink, you simply can't force a game to be an esport. Nope. And as long as the Hairs of the Storm is literally proof of that. I, I think I watched the video on uh, stream. Did I did I watch the video of uh, how Heroes of the Storm failed as an esport where the guy literally talks about how they dumped a bunch of money into it and then eventually they ran out of money to actually develop the game. Yeah, I did. Okay, yeah. It was a while the ago. The community keeps trying to do that. More and more games will fail to reach their true potential. Wait, 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 what? Hold on. His name is Suka Blast. <laughs> That's so funny. More and more games will fail to reach their true potential. I should go back and wad. Oh, it's probably gone, man. That VOD is probably long gone. Good video. I like this little Mr. Snowman, guys. It's a good video. Peep it, chat. Peep it. And I like that he's a little 3D snowman tuber, too. He's got a little... Oh, he's a little... He has a little ponytail. Wait, so I don't get it? What? What don't you get? What don't you understand? You were playing D4 at the time, or was I playing D4 at the time? I think it might have been a long time before. He never really explained how esports ruined gaming. Um, I think he's more lamenting the fact that games like League of Legends and Valorant try to balance the game around competitiveness. And the funnest time I personally think League was centered around was when it wasn't centered around esports. Better title, esports effects on gaming. Yes, I think that probably would have been a better, uh, better title. Yeah, because he didn't go into why it was ruining it. Esports itself didn't ruin gaming. It's the unhealthy mentality of forcing esports into ru everything ruins games. The league was made into an esport, as was Valorant, though. Yeah, and I think the game has gotten substantially worse. Is someone saying that making a game to be competitive is ruining what otherwise would be a good game? Um, he's more saying that making a good making a game to be competitive is ruining what would otherwise be a good game. I disagree because CS:GO wasn't made to be competitive. CS game CS:GO was a freaking was a source port like source um. Like, it was like the thing with, like, Warcraft 3 and Dota. It was, like, originally a different game, and then it got made into CSGO, right? I was taking a step further and say metagaming ruins online games in general. And... I don't know. I disagree because Tekken and Smash existed before the internet. Metagaming was really a thing. CS Mods was a mod that was made to be competitive. Yeah, okay, I think, yeah, I think I get where you're coming from. I guess so. But in essence, CSGO, quote unquote, was. It was made to pull the esports team from OG Dota. I don't think that was their intent. I genuinely don't believe that because they, I never heard once that they, made league to compete with dota they just made it to make it more of a casual game they made league because they wanted a more casual dota i remember this because uh one of the og devs said yeah like i went from d being a dota uh like developer like Mor morello whatever his name was um, he used to be on the Dota team and he said, yeah, I just wanted to go ahead and make a MOBA that was easier to understand than, um, Dota at the time. 
CS was made to be a competitive game, not exactly an esport. I just got it like that because it's a good game. Yeah, exactly. I I don't think it was set out to be an esport. Like when you make like Overwatch, for example, I think it was a good game. But when they started shifting into the esports scene and trying to make it competitive when the game isn't supposed to be competitive, like it's not well balanced to be a competitive game. There's RNG. There's like having to swap and fucking do that. The stupid comp shifting that they did with from Overwatch 1 to I think the player base will make a game competitive. Yeah, and I don't think there were many people who wanted to play. Blizzard turning uh, characters around the skill sets of the 0.1% instead of the rest of the 99%. Well, they should never have made it a competitive game. Like, may removing the ability to have five Torbjorns, I understand that because sometimes it was really fucking annoying. But they should have never made it into an eSport. They wasted so much money and, like, time on development for very little return. Like, if if Overwatch was truly a popular eSport, it would have organically had it, like, how do I say it? They would have organically made it something that people would want to watch. Competitive marbles, yep. Plus exclamation point boost. Super cancer team comp is bad. Well, people develop a meta, but forcing it on people is also kind of cringe. I also didn't know uh, Overwatch 2 had an esports scene. I don't, they don't. They don't. They killed it. Yeah, they killed the esports scene. For sure. Well, you don't want to fight a team of sentry guns? Dude, it was so fun locking in five Torbjorns, but being on the receiving end was absolutely horrific. I remember getting so mad and be like, oh my god, these assholes locked in five Torbjorns, and we need to do five Torbjorns, and then it was just a stalemate because it's whoever gets on the, gets on the thing first, and like, I don't know. It was fun, but like, I guess it is annoying to some people. I didn't know Overwatch 2 still had online servers. <laughs> they do, they do. People still play it. <laughs> the clip of six winces jumping on the foin is so funny. Dude. Five Torbjorns, man. Five Tor. Easy. <laughs> 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 So funny, man. The Torbjorn apocalypse. Oh my god, I remember this. <laughs> You're literally AFK dead and you get to play the game. Uh, it's so good. As long as you should just make a game if it became a, becomes an esports, should be a side effect to become popular. Unsure as I don't mess with esports. Yes, I agree. If you make a good competitive game unintentionally, go for it. If you're making a competitive game, you should just try to make it good than an eSport would fall if the community gets behind it. Yes, that's exactly what that guy was talking about, too, with over- uh, not Overwatch, um, Smash. Yeah. Mommy! Piss, piss, piss. Shit! Piss, 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 piss. Fuck, 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 fuck,